We often observe a separation of charge between a metal and ions in solution. This phenomenon leads to an easily measured quantity or a voltage that is related to the activity of the redox species in a predictable manner. We can exploit this situation for analysis so it's worthy of exploring more closely. So consider a solution of silver nitrate and a silver wire dipping into the nitrate solution. Let's zoom in here to the atomic level. It's possible for some silver ions in solution to find a place on the metal surface and become a part of the metal by taking an electron out of the conduction band of the metal. Consequently, the metal surface becomes positively charged. The process may proceed in the opposite direction, with silver atoms going out into the solution, each leaving an electron behind as the ion departs. In that charge builds up on the metal, and an electric potential difference exists across the metal solution interface. Let's examine how this electric potential difference, which is measurable, is related to conditions of the system. All that when a reaction reaches equilibrium, the free energy difference between the products and the reactants goes to zero. In describing the contributions to the free energy of a system, we often refer to the chemical potential of each of the species. We say that a system reaches equilibrium when the chemical potential for the products equals the chemical potential of the reactants. Whenever charged species are involved in a reaction, we need to take the energy associated with the charge into account as well. So we might say that an equilibrium is reached when the electrochemical potentials of the products and reactants are equal. So how do we express the electrochemical potential of different species? Let's consider the electrochemical potential of the silver ions in this solution. We use mu bar for the electrochemical potential of a species. The first component is the chemical potential for formation of a mole of silver ions at standard state. And we'll define our standard state to be standard temperature and pressure and unit activity for the ion. If the system moves away from unit activity, we must account for that. We do so by adding a term that is RT times the natural log of the activity of the ions. Since this species has a charge, we have to account for that by considering the work required to bring a charge from outer space into the solution. This work term will have units of joules per coulomb of charge. Since we're dealing with moles of charge, we want to convert from coulombs to moles by using Faraday's constant, which is 96,485 coulombs per mole. If the charge on the ion is something other than one, we need to multiply this quantity by the charge per ion. Well, the electron is also one of our reactants, so we have to write the electrochemical potential for the electron in the silver metal. There will be a chemical potential term for the formation of an electron in silver. If there were changes in activity of the electron in the metal, then we would have to add the log term as we did with silver ions. However, the activity of an electron in metal is one by definition. Because an electron is charged, we have to account for the work done to bring a charge into the silver metal. We'll also multiply this quantity by Faraday's constant in order to convert to coulombs, uh, convert coulombs to moles, and we'll also multiply by minus one the charge on an electron. Now let's consider the silver metal. You'd expect a chemical potential term for the formation of silver from standard state. But of course, it's elemental form, so 
it's already in standard state, but we'll include it for completeness sake. We might also consider a log term for any change in activity. But of course, since it's a solid, by definition, we say that its activity is unity. So the electrochemical potential of silver metal is the same as the chemical potential for the silver. So let's consider the system at equilibrium. And we will then set the electrochemical potential of the products equal to the electrochemical potential of the reactants. On the product side, we have only silver metal. On the reactant side, we have silver ions and the electron. Let's combine the work terms together over here on the left. I'm essentially subtracting them from both the left and right side of our first equation. If we're going to group everything else on the right, we have to subtract the chemical potential for the silver metal on both sides. Faraday's constant is common to both terms on the left-hand side, so let's pull that out. And I'm going to group all of the mu terms on the right-hand side together. Now recall that a potential difference is the work required to move a charge between two points in question. And the points in question here are the solution and the electrode surface or silver surface. We frequently use a capital E to represent a potential difference. So we see that that's the difference between the work done to bring a charge into the silver and to bring a charge into the solution. So if we divide both sides by F, we get our quantity uh, for the potential difference, E. Now, notice that all of these terms uh, may be hard to evaluate, but they are all essentially a constant. It's essentially the potential energy difference at standard state. That is, it would be the electrochemical potential we would measure if all products and reactants were at unit activity. So we'll replace this collection of terms with E0. So in summary, we have that this electrochemical potential is the sum of the standard state electrochemical potential or standard electrochemical potential plus RT over F times the log of the activity of the silver ions.